<sighs> it's Zach Selesky, uh, back with you guys with another video. Uh, first and foremost, guys, if you have not yet, feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, as always, gotta feel weird doing that. <laughs> I have a weird mood. I feel like I'm sitting way too low. Like I'm kind of in a weird, somber mood uh, today a little bit. Uh, if you guys follow me on social media, you guys probably know that uh, one of, obviously the one of the Chiefs coaches actually passed away uh, on the 8th. Honestly, it's, and a lot of you guys are probably like, oh, you know, we're sorry because, you know, he was a Chiefs coach, whatever, but um, if you guys haven't seen Marty Schottenheimer passed away at the age of 77, and a lot of you guys are probably like, oh, Chiefs coach, we understand, but but it's, it's a lot more than that. Uh, kind of want to go into detail a little bit. Uh, so obviously, for those of you guys who know that I grew up right outside Kansas City, Marty Schottenheimer was the head coach for the Chiefs back in the, the 90s. And why that is such a big deal is because basically the, the, the fandom or the craziness that the fans are, that they're kind of touted by the media, um, basically what they're known for today is kind of the stuff that he started when he was the head coach of the Chiefs. So. Second down, Denver inside their one. Elway is under center. Now he pulls away again, his hands on his hips. He looks back at Gordon McCarter, the referee, said, hey, what gives? Again, I have asked the defense to help lower the crowd noise. Any further crowd noise problem will result in a charge timeout against Kansas City. Thank you for your cooperation. You guys know anything about the Chiefs from the 80s to the 90s are two separate things. I mean, the 80s, the Chiefs were terrible. The Chiefs were absolutely terrible. Um, but in the 90s, they really started to, uh, they started to pick it up. You know, I think when Marty came in, he really instilled a, a different style of, a different mentality. Uh, and it's not just like, just some random coach coming in and, and uh, coming in and, and instilling his system or something like that. It was much more than that. And I'm sure some of you guys are probably like, you know, why does this matter or whatnot. He is probably the single-handedly the reason why I'm, even a coach today. So a lot of you guys have seen me with coaching and all these coaching vlogs and whatnot. He is single-handedly probably the reason why I even went into coaching because growing up in Kansas City during that time in the 90s, it was absolutely just, it was just, there was like a weird general excitement. And, and you know, I have memories after memories of it. And it's funny because, I mean, I kind of met the guy in passing over the years, whether it's just, going to Chiefs events or whatnot. I've, I kind of met him through those avenues. So I don't really know him as a person, but um, just being on the community a little bit. And one the one thing that really just stands out to me personally was we would go to church and I remember we would get done with church service and then we'd have like a, a donut, kind of coffee donut juice, uh, like luncheon type of thing. Before then, I would go, as a kid, I would go to like Sunday school. And right before then, they would, uh, right before I go off to Sunday school, you just have all these groups of people just talking about the game for that Sunday, and then just kind of talk about what was, you know, what was the, their game plan and what they would expect to see out of the team for that day. Um, it's little stuff like that that kind of stand out to me personally. Another memory that kind of stands out to me, uh, realistically, was probably when uh, me and my family, actually, we decided to take one summer, we decided to go up to River Falls in Wisconsin. That's actually where they had, used to have training camp. And I remember uh, very vividly that in between practices, the Chiefs had like two a days, three days uh, practices, and so a lot of times in passing, uh, the players would just make sure like, uh, would sign the autographs or whatnot. But you could tell there's a lot of times where the guys would actually be tired from practice and be like, hey, this is, this is, I, we don't want to do this. <laughs> Which I don't blame, you know, as a football player and as a coach, you're just like, you're exhausted. You don't really want to, you're in the heat. You're like, ah, the hell with it. We don't want to, we don't want to do that. We don't sign autographs, whatever, but I remember, there's a couple times as a kid 
these guys would be walking in and there'd be like railings right here and kids and like me and my brother would be holding out stuff for people to sign. I remember a bunch of players, especially like bigger name players, would just kind of walk by and go in. And I remember Marty would go in and be like, hey, I want you guys to go out and sign these autographs now. He would actually make these guys go out and be like, sign them. Because this is your community. These are people who pay for your salaries and tickets and everything. Go. So it's little things like that. It just kind of makes it stand out. All I remember was throughout the years, I kept hearing the same thing from players to play for Marty, basically saying how their careers were either resurrected or they were improved because of him. And that's something I kind of strive to be in my own right as a coach. I want to take guy, I want to take things that guys that probably miss about a certain player and then you kind of amplify it and try to really resurrect their, their mindset or their career, whatever it, the case may be. Like that's... That's something that really kind of sticks with me to this day. But um, the one thing I think what people tend to overlook is his ability to find coaching talent. So, for example, if you guys don't know anything about uh, Marty, is just, you know, he's, his assistants, the list of assistants that he's had were unbelievable. I mean, you had, you had Bill Cower, Tony Dungy, Herman Edwards, uh, Bruce Arians, Mike McCarthy. I mean, you name it. It's just <clears throat> the list... It's just staggering. Um, even his secondary coaching tree was just, there's a lot of names, really good coaches. The thing I kind of remember the most out of all this stuff, and I'm sure you guys are like, wow. <laughs> but this is a guy that's not just a developer of talent, but he's also a developer of coaching talent. Um, you know, he's he's won over 200 games. Uh, I, think, I think when the statistic came out, he coached 21 years in the NFL and only had two losing seasons, which that was just unfathomable, to be honest with you. You just don't see that ever. And people might be all surprised, like, what, what does this mean for me personally? It's like, this, this means a heck of a lot for me as a coach personally, because this is a man who probably single-handedly is the reason why I got into coaching in the first place. And it's, um, it's times and, and it's people like him and times like that kind of make me think back a little bit to Kansas City a little bit and I think back what was my mindset back in those days and this is such an unbelievable coach. I don't know if we're ever going to see a coach like this who can not only develop talent but also develop coaching talent. The, those are two things that's so hard to do in today's game. Um, but, uh, geez, what a time. What a time to be alive. And, the one thing that I think every, what everybody kind of agrees with with about Marty is his epic, epic pregame speeches. This is a guy that just, he knew, he knew how to get the most out of his players. And it was just so, I don't know, it just, he's one of those coaches that could take anything just from his gut and just, just spewed out to the players. And players would just, maybe not understand right away, but they would knew, they just knew what he was trying to say in the end. He just, they just kind of had that inkling like, hey, we, we get it. We understand what he's trying to do and where he's trying to go and he just inadvertently just would motivate anybody and everybody so it's just unbelievable um unbelievable guy uh like i said just i feel like i had to make this video just because he is such a profound influence on myself as a coach and why i even coach today but just uh, single-handedly one of the biggest reasons um but whew. Rest in peace, Marty. Oof. When you step across the white stripe, the only thing that matters is that six inches between your backbone and your breastbone. Raise your eyes up. Right above is the next rung. Reach out and grab that rung. Pull yourself. Push your buddy. The Let's next go. rung is today. Let's go. go. You can. You will. You believe. You believe. You believe. This is a game of the heart. A game of being a man. Let's go. Do not underestimate the power of the human will. Light the ignition. Let's get this rocket ship going up now. Those two little letters, W-E-W, -E, those two little letters, U-S, us, they're powerful. They're powerful. Great job. I like the character of this football team. Because I'll tell you what, guys, when you get your back in a corner and people start looking left and right, all you gotta do in this locker room is look at one another. You guys stood tall. 
you reached down in the inner part of your gut and you did what had to be done. And I want to tell you something, guys. When you do that, there ain't nobody can ever take that away from you because you did it. And I'm proud of you. Congratulations. We got our people. Let's light the fuse and kick some ass.